you can be from any barrels where you come and get the tea. You want real talk with real people, know where else you need to go. Talking real issues, real substance, what else you need to know? Shout and been all in the White House, but she can talk the trap. She ain't never left the community, so she know where it's at. I'm talking BK finer, she gon' rep it to the grave. And I only support the real, so I'ma tune in every day. Way up. <laughs> Yes, it is way up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here. Yeah, Mano. back on a Monday. Mano's been in rehearsals nonstop. What are these rehearsals? Man, I got this show coming. Okay. It's TV. Wow. You know, something nice. I can't wait for my rehearsal call. <laughs> well, listen, it was a big weekend. It was Powerhouse Weekend in Philly and in New York. Yeah. So we saw a lot of things going viral. I actually attended. A lot of cake. Yeah. I, <laughs> I attended as a guest. Yeah. I didn't even have to really work or anything, but I was I was there for sure. It was in sweet. Yes, I was in the suite. I was watching the show, enjoying myself. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll talk about some of the things that happened. Man, okay. imagine jumping into the, the crowd and losing your chain. Man. That was tough. Yeah. You're the iciest, though. All right, well, let's get this show started. Today, we do have the EPA, the um, Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, Michael Regan, joining us. You know, this is the hottest October on record. Yeah, it's been, it was 80 degrees the other day. I mean, that's ridiculous. I like right. it, though. Just, yeah, you like it until you realize it means there's problems with the environment. Oh, no, we already uh, yeah. we knew that already. So we'll talk to him about that because that is his job uh, to figure out what we need to do to move forward to make sure our great, 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 great grandchildren will have a safe environment to live in. Um, but let's get this show started with Shine a Light, 800-292-5150. Spread some love. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm a shine. Turn your lights on, y'all. Turn your lights on. Spreading love to those who are doing greatness. Shine a light on them. It's time to shine a light on them. Yo, it's Way Up with Angela Yee on a Monday, and Mano is here. New Mano! Yes. A Main Ovation Monday, and it's time yeah. to shine a light, and you're going to love this one. I want to shine a light on Dr. Tori J. Evans-Barton. She's the founder and CEO of the Fatherless Generation Foundation, Inc. She's celebrating having reunited 8,400 fatherless children wow. with 3,281 biological fathers. Wow. Yeah, she grew up without her biological dad. She reunited, him, re reunited with him when she was 31 years old old and she said that caused her to discover her identity and realize the significance of a father's role in our lives so she's been doing this that's work. really dope how, did, how are they separated like through, uh, a, um, it could be for any um, reason you know it could be uh, you know maybe they lost touch maybe the person didn't even know that that was their dad right. it could be the mom not wanting them to see it, it could be the dad having gone ghost so mm. she's actually helped a lot of people get reconnected and changed lives. So shout out to her for that, Dr. Tori J, the Fatherless Generation Foundation. All right, now uh, let's get into Shine a Light for you. 800-292-5150, spread some love. Michelle, how are you? Good, Anthony. How are you? Ah, good, thank you. Who would you like to shine a light on, darling? Thank you. I would like to shine a light on my beautiful daughter, Mackenzie. Okay, Mackenzie. I like that name. Thank you. Since she was 10 years old, she wanted to start her own fragrance. Two years ago, she was about to get it bottled up and everything, and then she found out she had breast cancer. Ooh. She beat breast cancer, and so making the story short, she just got all her bottles of her fragrance. It's a unisex. It's called Six, but it's Elise is her line. That's her middle name and my middle name. So I'm so proud of her because since she was 10 years old, Aww. she said she was going to do it and she has finally done it. Oh, that's so amazing. And I just want to say I love you, Mackenzie, and I'm so proud of you. Thank yeah. you so much for calling. You're welcome. Have a blessed day. You too. All right, well, that was Shine a Light on them. 800-292-5150 is a number in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we have a Yee T. We'll be talking about Powerhouse. There were some very viral moments that went down. Also, Diddy, he has a new movie coming. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. They say it's truth in the room. Ah! From industry shade to all the gossip. Out to me. Angela's spilling that Yee T. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mano is here. Yeah. New Mano! And Mano, let's get into some Yee Tea. We got to get you some skims. 
All right, that's Kim Kardashian's uh, underwear line. I gotta see what they look like first and foremost. All right, well here's a picture for, for you. Let me see. And actually, they just launched Skims okay. Men on October 26. A box of briefs. Yeah, pretty much, and yeah. it made millions in just a few minutes. And they've also just signed a deal with the NBA. So that's, that's a, a huge move. thing. Kim Kardashian wrote, introducing the Skims and NBA partnership. Skims is now the official underwear partner of the NBA, WNBA, and USA Basketball. Okay, I'm a large. Okay. <laughs> Why are you looking around? <laughs> you sure? Just, I'm a large. Just letting you know. Listen, Skims was recently valued at $4 billion, so I can imagine that number is up. Mm. All right? All right, Diddy is suing Diazio for unlawful retaliation. That's the brand, that's the distributor that he does Ciroc and De Leon with. And he has accused them of racial discrimination back in May. It's been an ongoing back and forth between the two of them, with him accusing them of not handling marketing and, marketing and investments for De Leon properly while pumping a lot of money into brands like Casamigos and Don Julio. And then they responded saying that, uh, he has unreasonable financial demands and was basically extorting them. So now he's suing them for unlawful retaliation. All right. In other Diddy news, he has released his official trailer for Off the Grid that is bringing to life an R&B love story. It's a journey of escaping from the road with his romantic lover, a space free of distractions and communications, immersing oneself in love with no phones allowed. And it co-stars a uh, Ugandan actress and supermodel Eva Apio. All right. So Diddy's always making moves and he's got that happening. He directed it. He wrote it. And it's based on the love stories from his love album off the grid. You could have been acting in that, man. Oh, you've been such a, been. Lo a lover so, lately. Yeah, man. You know, in your men's skims. Um, yeah. Now, Ice Spice went viral at Powerhouse. A lot of cake. In New York. First of all, she had on a Betty Boop Halloween costume. And so it's funny because I didn't realize I didn't, that. I didn't realize, I didn't that, realize that until later because people were talking about her heels, but those are the black heels that Betty Boop wore. And so the costume was um that was, was a costume? pretty good. Yeah, she was dressed up as Betty Boop. Only problem is the awkwardness of like having to pull down your dress while you're on stage. No, I think performing. it was meant to be that way. I don't, she didn't seem that comfortable with the outfit sometimes really? it feels good in theory and it's pulled down but then you actually get on stage and it's not as uh comfortable she a baddie she be showing her panties yes that's a fact <laughs> <laughs> but she was recently named one of complex's 50 best new york rappers and she definitely has gained a lot of fame very quickly and so she was on stage at Powerhouse. That went viral. Another thing that went viral was little Uzi Vert lost his chain while performing. I was watching this in real time mm. as he jumped into the audience, which was exciting for everybody. But he had on all those chains. You know, he's the he's iced out. And here's what he had to say. When I jump down this mother, I drop my mother chain. Whoever find that mother, I cash you out on the spot right now. How did I mean? It's hard for me to understand how that how that happened because they they clamp. Maybe the clamp went. You know, sometimes that happens where the clamp comes loose, and especially when you're moving around a lot and it's heavy. Know. Those these chains clamps, look heavy. Yeah, these clamps is locked though. He's locked. You know, he had. A, first of all, I didn't even realize there was a chain missing because he had on so many chains right. anyway. I was like, it was the one with the chain? cross, right? Yeah, so that's really sad. But I, hopefully, somebody gives it back and. That would be the right thing to do. And I can imagine little Uzi would definitely bless you with a reward. He seems like that type of person. All right. He also talked about now little Uzi verse pronouns is there. They. Um, so so what? They, there, you that, know. For him? Anyway, he's opened up about some issues. No, they opened up about some issues they're working through and their desire to live a perfectly normal life. I know sometimes it's hard to get the pronouns pronouns right. So you can Can't check call him he. No, you can't call them they. Okay. okay. All right. Calm down. And okay. that is uh, your Yeeti. And when we come back, we have about last night. That's where we discussed the things that we got into last night. It was a very hectic weekend. I know you've been in rehearsals. I was actually at Powerhouse. I was doing a lot of different things. I also was studying and I haven't taken a test in so long. And I was telling you, I'm really nervous about it. I have this thick book. I've been doing all these you online got it. You got practice it. exams. And we'll discuss that in about last night. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Way Up. This is a judgment-free zone. Tell us a secret. All right, it's Way Up with Angela Yee. It's time for Tell Us a Secret. Mano is here. No, can we, Mano! Can we also just talk about SZA and her performances and how amazing she is? I was watching her up in the crowd. She's amazing. She went all the way to, like, the back, up, you know, upstairs. The back. Where the energy. The back. 
Relax, Nato. <laughs> Relax. Okay? <laughs> Shout out to SZA. The other day I was on Sherry Shepard and we were talking about how Jennifer and I went to school with Lauren Hill, but SZA also went to that high school, Columbia really? High School. So did wrote Timmy. A lot of us. So you remember Lauren Hill from that? Yeah, we, she was in all my classes. Re so you never told me this. I'm going to show you something. But anyway, it's time for Tell Us a Secret. And would you agree that everybody has secrets? Absolutely. You got Everybody. Many. It don't matter who you are. You got a lot. Everybody has secrets. All right, 800-292-5150. Hello, Anonymous caller. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? I'm oh, good. Thank you. You want to tell us a secret? Yes. I broke up from my, from my ex-boyfriend two months ago, and I'm now dating his best friend. You <gasps> foul for that. Oh, my God. His best friend is foul for that. Yeah, they both foul. Y'all both yeah, foul. We have a best connection. Okay. So yeah. does your does your ex know? No. I mean, he kind of he kind of heard a rumor. And then he came and asked me about it, but I was just so, like, caught off guard, so I kind of lied about you it. denied it. He lied. Wow. I denied it first. <laughs> is his best friend going to tell him, and is that still his best friend? Yes, he going, he's going to eventually tell him. See, the type that my the type of guy my ex is, like, he understands energy, and he, under, he always said that, you know? Like, who's to say you may not connect with somebody close to me, y'all have a better connection, but... His main thing was to let him know. So all that time you was with your boyfriend, you was really on your on his best friend. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he made it comfortable that way. Kinda. Nah, the best yeah, friend is a sucker, it. and you foul for that. You Mano's no judgment. No, it is judgment. <laughs> all right. Well, no listen. Judgment, Mano, no yeah. judgment. You think y'all gonna end up together like getting married? No, she gonna do it yes. again. He said yes. No, I'm not going to do it again. But yes, I believe that we have a better connection, and I think this our uh, road stops here. Okay. This is why I'm well, still there in the you street, have it. That's this it. Why. That's why you're in the street. All yeah, right. Well, thank why. you for sharing with fault. us. No problem. Hey, what's up, Anonymous Caller? How are you? Hey, how's you doing? I'm good. Thank you. It's Mia Mano, and we are not going to judge you, but we do want to hear your secret. All right. Well, I mean, my secret is like, I pick my nose sometimes behind my friends when I go past the blood. What is it? Wait, you said you pick your nose and what? I pick my nose, you know, behind my friends, and I still pass the blunt. And you still pass the blunt? After you pick your nose? Yeah. I do I do that too, but oh. I mean, it's You all don't right. eat your boogers, do you? I know who I am, and they just gonna have to keep smoking it, you know what I mean? <laughs> what? Nasty. But do you, you don't put boogers on the blunt? I don't know. But I mean, you know, I'm picking my nose. I Picking guess your nose is not be on your... yeah. Boogers, do you, do you leave the boogers on your fingers? Like, I mean, it's not the that... worst is when you see somebody digging in their nose. Like, if you in a car and you look over or on the train or something, you see somebody digging in their nose and you're like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you put the boogers after you pick your nose? He's in the blunt. You what smoke you the blunt. He smoked his boogers. That's what he's saying. Yo, man, no, come on, man. <laughs> I'm just saying. He, does like... not. he puts it on his clothes, maybe. Right. Or you try to like fling it somewhere. Hey man, at least y'all know what that's to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, do you get a lot of satisfaction when it's like a big rock that you pull out? <laughs> big rock. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> alright well thank you for calling sound like even flat boots too <laughs> alright relax Um, but when we come back we have Yeti we'll talk about sports Magic Johnson he is the fourth athlete billionaire we'll tell you who else he follows in the footsteps of and since we're doing basketball let's do Dwight Howard's statement oh. it's way up with Angela Yee <laughs> yo she about to blow the lid up off this spot let's get it oh yeah Angela's spilling that Yeti come and get the tea What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Mayno is here. Yeah. yeah and you know what time it is. It's time for that yeet tea. Now, let's start off with saying a rest in peace to Matthew Perry. His family and friends are speaking out. Uh, his family put out a statement to people. They said they are heartbroken by his tragic death. Uh, we are heartbroken by the tragic loss of our beloved son and brother. Matthew brought so much joy to the world, both as an actor and a friend. They said you all meant so much to him, and we appreciate the tremendous outpouring of love. Apparently, he drowned while inside of a jacuzzi. How did that happen? Listen, they're still trying to figure it out. The cause of death has been deferred by the coroner. They said an autopsy was completed today and mm. toxicology results are pending. And so there was no signs of foul play. There was no drugs or anything like that that was found near there. But he had been playing pickleball a lot. And he actually played pickleball hours before his untimely death. Mm. His pickleball mentor and friend of two years, Matt Manassi, said that it was particularly upsetting because he was living a happy and clean life. And just last year, he came out with a book, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing, a memoir that was detailing his decade 
decades long struggle with alcohol and drug addictions mm. too. And so really sad to see something like this happen, but this was in LA. All right. Uh, so rest in peace again. Uh, Magic Johnson has become the fourth athlete billionaire. According to Forbes, he is worth $1.2 billion. Now, people in... Mm-hmm. Um, LeBron. Yep. Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods. That's right. So he is the fourth one. So a shout out to Magic Johnson. Now, speaking of the NBA, Dwight Howard and his team <laughs> have released a statement um, to what the shade that, no, don't do that. And they deny that he has ever sexually assaulted anyone. They said this is a civil case that was made public for profit. In this case, the accuser is solely suing Dwight Howard and has refrained from suing the other party in which he claims to be involved. It is important to know that these matters were never about sexual assault. This was merely about money and greed. Such individuals have made continuous attempts to elicit payment from Dwight. This has resulted in intimidating with false claims. Mm, mm, mm. So that is part of that statement that his team and that Dwight Howard released. All and he right? said he said he do what he want to do, right? He said, in his uh, bedroom, he says, "Stay out my stay bedroom. Out, stay out his bedroom. Whatever I do in the bedroom <coughs> doesn't have anything okay. to do with anybody else." Okay. All right. Q-Tip has joined the team for the Muhammad Ali musical Ali. He is the music producer and co-lyricist. You know how much we love Q-Tip. And it's going to premiere at the Kentucky Center for the Performing Arts in Ali's hometown of Louisville back in 2024 in the fall. And then it's going to be on Broadway at some point in 2025. Q-Tip said, Muhammad Ali has been an inspiration for me my entire life. I look forward to working with Teddy, Clint, Casey, Sean, and the entire creative team and telling the great man's story in this form. Mm, We're going to that. Absolutely. All right, and Flavor Flav, by the way, he sang the national anthem on Sunday, and this was at the Milwaukee Bucks and Atlanta Hawks game. Here is some of Flavor Flav. At the home of the brave, <laughs> of the brave, of the brave. <laughs> he ain't do bad neither. <laughs> We enjoyed that. I just saw him at Black Entrepreneur's Day, which is going to be streaming November 1st. And when I tell you, he did a lot of things that were unscripted. I wonder if he rehearsed that. I don't know, but he said the anthem was a longtime bucket list item. That was fun. I can't live my life worried about what people might say about me. I won't let that stop me from trying new things and doing things I want to do. Some people might not like that, but a sure failure is if you stop trying. That's right. That is a great bucket list thing to have uh, kicked off. All right. Well, that is your Yeetie. And when we come back, we have Under the Radar. These are the stories that are not necessarily in the headlines. They are flying under the radar. (laughs) You could do that, though. What? The, the national Sing? anthem. You think so? Yeah, you should do if it. If could do it, I feel Absolutely. inspired. All yeah. right? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Under the Radar is next. News that relates to you. These stories are flying under the radar. All right. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And Mano is here. New Mano. Talk to him. Talk to him. And it's time for some under the radar stories. By the way, Halloween is tomorrow. And did mm-hmm. you know that candy corn sales have been growing year over year? Not From 2020 to 2022. Who in here I stopped eats liking those. Candy corn. <laughs> you can only eat a few and then you start feeling nasty. But people spend about $60 million on uh, candy corn overall. And that was just from um, last year, up from $57 million from the year before that. Mm. Just putting that out there. Some people do enjoy that. All right. Um, Florida, they have a new high speed train. It goes from Orlando to Miami. And that's going to be a huge deal because I know that drive going from Miami to Orlando is not an easy one. And how fast is it? Oh, man, it says here. Well, first of all, it's called um, you can get a smart ticket. The one way smart fare started seventy nine dollars for adults, thirty nine dollars for kids. Um, You can also do one way premium fares that are one hundred and forty nine dollars. But um, they said the speeds of up to 125 miles per hour. It takes about two hours. Well, the ride between Orlando and West Palm Beach, they said, is about two hours. This, I guess, is um, a little bit longer than that. So I would do it. Yeah, it's like the bullet train. Everybody uh, loves taking a train from New York to D.C., but I don't enjoy it so much. I like never take the train at all. Yeah, but, you know, traffic is so crazy that you can see why um, something like this could could happen. All right. Scented candles, according to reports, are secretly harming your health. Now, I've been hearing about this. I heard about that, too. And I asked the lady when she was here about that. 
Well, I think it also depends on what it's made out of. And exactly. I learned this too. So if this is something that is all natural and doesn't have paraffin in it, or it's not petroleum-based paraffin, then you don't have to worry about it, right? But a lot of times, scented candles do have that, and that's been an issue. But now I think people are a lot more aware of it. And so we did just get some amazing candles in here. Just bought some. Supported yeah, black business. Yeah, we just business. bought some. Urban Glow. So that doesn't have paraffin in it? Yeah, no, these are uh, hand-poured soy candles, so you can read what's in it. You know what somebody told me? Um, when the flame is black, and I don't know how true this is, that then it's harmful. But if it's more of a clear type of smoke coming out of it, then it doesn't have that. I don't know how true that is, but I was told that from someone who makes candles. Never seen black smoke. All right, well, that is your Under the Radar. And when we come back, we got the Way Up Mix at the top of the hour. Plus, since we're talking about the environment, we have the administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency, Michael Regan, joining us straight from the White House with Secret Service and everything. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Way Up! Just like to talk like they Angela Yee, like they Angela Yee. Man, she's spilling it all. This is Yee T. Way Up! What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mayno is here. No, no Mayno. Mayno. Let's get into some Yee Tea. First of all, Dion Cole caught three people breaking into his house. He put on social media, look at these MFers trying to break into my house. Listen to me good. Don't you all ever come back to my home ever again. Whatever y'all looking for ain't there. But if you do return, know that there will be more surprises waiting for you. Actually, I've tripled up on the surprises. Thank you to the <laughs> cops for jumping and being all over and on this as well. Tripled up on the surprises. Yep. <laughs> Surprise. Like the bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> that is a violation, though. Seeing people trying to break into your house. Thank God yeah. they were not able to get inside. But that still is something that is a serious cause of alarm. Was that in Atlanta? Um, I don't know. Where, I thought he lived in L.A., but I'm, you know, I'm not sure. He's from Chicago, though. Hmm. All right. 21 Savage um, and Kodak Black were going back and forth. This all has to do with um, Kodak going on Drink Champs. Now, people were concerned about his appearance on right. there. Um, in particular, Ray J said something. But let's talk about some things that happened during this interview. Now, one thing Kodak talked about was collaborating with 6 9 on the song Chakalaka and how polarizing that was from the public. Here's what he said. It ain't even nothing to think about. That's an M. It's like, is he what the f over I understand the value of a dollar. I don't even know the n he told on. We're in on and I ain't even from over there. All right, he also went on to talk about Boosie in that part where he said he can't believe Boosie went out like that because Boosie also had some criticism for him for working with Takashi. And I'm sure that definitely hurt his feelings, but he should have known that backlash was coming. Now, Kodak also talked about 21 Savage. And he says that he's been acting differently to him ever since he started working with Drake. Ever since 21 started working with Drake. Here's what Kodak said. Oh, you have to say future old? 21 Savage. From the one used to, be, used to be straight. Straight just got a certain like a uh, little effect that he do to mother. After that album they did together, like that, it was just like all of a sudden, mother just felt like you know what I'm saying they ain't uh, doing that. Uh, I know. It's hard to understand what he's saying. Yeah, you know, I had to do a sit down with him, but I understood everything. When right. I, had, I felt like he was talking it, clearer. I, back I had then, to though. concentrate. Um, here's what Twenty One Savage had to say. Future is a way bigger artist than me. When they ask you Future 21, all you had to do was say Future. That's all. Like, why the hell are you always dragging shit, trying to make it seem like we got a problem or it's just deeper than what the shit it is, bro? It ain't nothing, bro. Let it go. 21 also put a bunch of caps on his social right, media right. Yeah, page. Right. And now Ray J was very concerned after seeing what Kodak looked like in this interview. He said, yo, somebody need to grab bro and make sure he good. This ain't the interview, Nori. We got to help this dude. I took him to Trump house and he did the most. They were not happy with the experience because he had no guidance and respect. All right. Well, here's what Kodak had to say to Ray J. Hey, Ray J, you little ass. You don't need no help. Beat your little ass. Okay. All right. Well, there you go. And uh, Meek Mill also went on social media and said, I damn near don't even want to be labeled a rapper anymore. Yeah. And Kodak went on there and said, Big Boy and T.I. tried to tank his record deal. In addition, he also was upset that Lotto never spoke out and let people know he said that it wasn't him that she was but referring to. Who was she actually talking about? Uh, she's never said. Mm. Okay, well, that is your Yee team. I'm sure there's going to be a lot more responses to this, too, as days progress. All right, and Monday, main ovation. When we come back, Mano, yeah. 
you got some innovation for us on this beautiful Monday. This situation. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. You must. Y'all be Way Up with Angela Yee. Break them, come break them down. More now. It's going down. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. And new Mano. New Mano. Is Mano here. Is, yeah. Let's get some of this Monday. We Mano need it. This is a brand new Monday. We need to, the Mano here, Sean. No hesitation in any situation. And I'm going to tell you on this Monday, nobody cares unless you give them a reason to. Mm. Nobody's going to patch into your dreams just because you have one. Nobody's going to gonna gonna be a part of your movement just because you say you have one. You got to give them a reason to love you, baby. And then sometimes you even got to give them a reason to hate you because love and hate is so you know that's that's a thin line there's you know? no love without hate that's a that's an absolute fact you got to give them a reason to be to be involved with involved with you it's not that nobody rocking with you it's that you ain't you ain't gave us a reason to be a part of your movement so get on your grind and give us a reason you mm. know and that goes for all of us give us a reason to be a part of what you got going part, on okay yeah know? and you know sometimes we get offended because we're like oh they only care about me when I got something going on. I mean, it's the way of the world. But it is, right? You could be on the bottom and no one cares. See, but then when you I'm get saying. back on top again, everyone cares. It's about increasing your value. People want to be a part of something. Everybody wants to be a part of something that's moving. Everybody wants to get in the car when it's when it's when it has you know a lot of steam behind it. But you got to give them a reason. It's not nothing personal. And then when you understand that nobody cares unless you give them a reason to, then you 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 better at you know uh, navigating. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because that's why I really don't hold a grudge against mm -hmm. people. There's times that I've approached people about things and they kind of gave me the cold shoulder. Mm. But then I also understand when you lit, <clears throat> everybody wants to do that's things right. with you and they're going to jump on whatever it is that that's you have right. going on. That's why you got to get yourself to the point where everybody's trying to rock with you. You, get there. you, you can't just get expect there. people being like, oh, she ain't got nothing going on. Well, let me hop on this. For what? Yeah, nobody's going to volunteer themselves to you. Nobody's going to get involved with you. Nobody's going to be like, oh, this is a hot rap or this is a hot podcast or whatever it is you got to prove yourself over and over again you can't win today's game over yesterday's point i i keep telling y'all that all right well let that be your motivation to get out there and make it happen That's and right. make them jump on your train okay all right but well, when we come back we have ask ye 800-292-5150 is the number if you have a question if you need help if you need some motivation mm -hmm. call us up and we got you this relationship or career advice angela's dropping facts so you should know you should know this is ask ye What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Mano is here. Yep. My expert advice giver. I am. And we have um, Trish on the line. What's up, Trish? Hi, Angela. How are you? Hey, Trish. What's your question for Ask Yee? Yeah, I'm asking. I've been in a 10-month relationship with my partner, and we just don't have arguments. So I know it's a crazy thing to call about, but I'm wondering if that should be considered a red flag. Oh my what? gosh. You should rejoice. Yeah, you should be happy. You should be happy I, unless you toxic. <laughs> I mean, are things I going hear well? Do you for sure? Um, it's just I feel like when I bring things up that are concerns with me, it's more of a not passive, but kinda like I kinda wanna know that there's some pushback like yeah, so you run him. Well, she so, wants some smoke. Right. So you don't like do you feel like you're walking all over him and he's letting you get away with things that you shouldn't? No. We have a really healthy relationship, I would say most most soft I'm just concerned that he doesn't bring things to me like hey you know I have a problem with this or if I say no yeah, well, I need you to do more of this it's like okay but maybe he do doesn't that. need mm -hmm. that maybe he's pretty happy with you you think he compromised too much wow well, that's a good question I don't know if I'd say he compromises he adjusts a lot so do you complain to him about <laughs> anything like, like oh, this is crazy why would you want this but are you starting arguments you haven't started an argument with him either no, 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 not an argument. Just like we don't have disagreements to the point where he gives me pushback. It's okay. always, okay, yeah, I, I can see that. We'll do that. You could give know? him up. I'll give you some pushback. <laughs> I'll give you yeah, a lot Amanda of pushback. I'll argue with you all day. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of times we do get used to relationships where it's a lot of back and forth. I'm not a very argumentative person. Mm -hmm. And I think it's great to be able to have a conversation where you can just discuss things and it doesn't have to feel like I'm pushing back or I'm doing this. And maybe he is accepting like how you are and loves everything about you. I think a lot of times, even especially in the beginning of relationships, even things that might bother you later, like it's kind of the honeymoon phase mm. and we love everything. It could be later on. I'm annoyed that you snore, you hog the covers. But in the beginning, <laughs> it's cute. Yeah, I, I wish I could feel that way too. Like, I feel like for the most part, I'm very, you know, commending and like 
accommodating, but I'm concerned that sometimes I see things and I try to complain a lot in the beginning so that we know more about each other to move forward and then we can make a better, wholesome decision at like a year mark and say, well, maybe this is for me or isn't for me. But I don't know, it just kind of concerns me that everything about me is peaches and cream and I know everything about me is not peaches and cream. So It is to him, it is to him though, it is to him right now. (laughs) It is. Okay. Like, he's loving it. And okay. just enjoy your relationship. So you, can't, you can't satisfy with me. Okay. See? Yeah, look, I'm you not satisfied because he's treating me too good. Right, you're getting no, treated too good. But just enjoy yeah. it. Like, just enjoy the fact that you guys are loving each other. You're having a good time. He respects you. And don't cause an issue where there is none. Okay. Well, I love your advice, so thank you. I'll, I'll have a change of heart. <laughs> thank you all. All right. Thank you. Duh. Yeah, don't sabotage oh, yourself, man. okay? This is how you know women like toxicity. Okay. Just a little bit. That's why they like you. Love me. <laughs> all right. Well, that was Asky. 800-292-5150 in case you couldn't get through. And when we come back, we're going to have an amazing, enlightening conversation. I keep telling y'all this is the hottest October on record, and this is not normal, okay? And we do have the EPA administration. Administrator, that is the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, Michael S. Regan, joining us. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. Turn it up. Oh. You vibing Way Up with Angela Yee. Come right back. More now. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee, and Jasmine Brand is here with me. Yes, I'm here. And today we have a big deal. And you know it's a big deal because they done swept the building. Yes. A couple of days <laughs> in advance. <is> serious. <laughs> Michael S. Regan, the EPA Administrator, is here with us. Environmental Protection Agency. What exactly is your responsibility? Oh, wow. Well, first of all, thank you for having me. And it's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. President Biden appointed me as the administrator of the United States Environmental Protection Agency. So what we do is we protect drinking water, air quality, and we're at the tip of the spear as we fight this climate crisis. Right. So everything we do is protecting public health and the environment. So it's a huge, huge responsibility. That's everything that yeah. we need to live. And to be clear, <laughs> it is a crisis right now that we're in. But I want to make sure we always talk about solutions, too, yeah. and what the average person can do. Because sometimes people feel like, well, it's not my fault. You know, there's nothing I could really do about it as long as I'm going to be alive or whatever. People have to think about People in other parts of the world, they have to think about environmental justice. They have to think about future generations and how this will affect uh, those times. I saw this is like the hottest year on record. And they said even June and July and October is on record to be like the hottest month um, ever. It's serious. For October. Yeah, it's very serious. And for those who don't really want to think about 50 years from now or the science, Mm -hmm. When you look outside your window and you see these hurricanes, these floods, these wildfires, this extreme heat, you know, it's it's terrible in terms of the impact to especially our communities. But then you think about what it exacerbates when it's hot outside in these urban areas. Our kids with asthma, these respiratory illnesses, distress, our elderly. It has a disproportionate impact on our communities. So the environmental justice piece is just so critical, so important. Mm And I'm proud to say that President Biden is the first president to utter the words environmental justice during a State of the Union address. That shows you how much of a priority it is for this administration. Right now, we are talking to the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, Michael Regan. So how does that feel when people are bashing President Biden all the time? Because I always hear people be like, he didn't do anything for us or what has happened for black people since President Biden has been in office and we talk about environmental justice, Mm -hmm. environmental racism, Mm -hmm. even think about clean drinking water. We think of that as something that should be a right for what we have, but that's not necessarily the case in a lot of places. It's not. And you know, I think that, listen, the president has done an enormous amount for this country in just three years. It's now time for us to tell that story. Thanks to the president's leadership, my agency has $3 billion dollars solely focused on environmental justice. Just today, we are announcing $128 million going to uh, 186 communities who are struggling with lack of access to clean drinking water, Mm -hmm. pollution in their neighborhoods, even young organizations that just want to learn more about sustainability. We're giving grants out to help rebuild our communities. Right, and I see that you guys have set up 17 technical assistance centers too across the nation. So how can people find where these um, centers are so that they make sure that their community can also benefit from this program? Listen, they can go to EPA.gov. So we took about 200 million 
we invested in 17 centers all across the country made up of communities, academic institutions. They are going into our neighborhoods, building capacity so that these local organizations can apply and be competitive for this $3 billion. Some people will tell you that climate change doesn't exist and there's no issues and that we don't need to be concerned about it. You know, what do you say to people like that who are like, no, you know, there's nothing going on here. We don't have any issues. And I say it's abnormal in New York to experience the level of smoke you all experienced from wildfires and fires in Canada. It's never happened in my life. The yeah. flooding in the metro system, the people that died yeah. from flooding. These are times of climate crisis. Now, this crisis hasn't gone too far. And I think as the government invests in these solutions, part of this $3 billion is making sure that our communities who are on the front lines yeah. are prepared for this transition. And so I would encourage everybody to reach out to your local we're partnering with the NAACP, the Urban League, mm -hmm. our churches. These are the organizations we want to get the resources, not just the government, but our local community leaders. Yeah. All right. Michael Regan, the administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency, is here with me and Jasmine Brand. We have more with him when we come back, including more discussions on the $3 billion initiative for environmental justice. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. More Way Up with Angela Yee on now. You know who it is. You know who it is. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee. Jasmine Brand is here, and so is the EPA Administrator. That is the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, Michael S. Regan. And then even the drinking water issues yes. that we've been having. Like, we see Flint, Michigan. The fact that they, for so long, yeah. have had to deal with uh, contaminated water... I mean, it is a process, though, right? But certain things are like an emergency. And yeah. I feel like if that was another area, it wouldn't have taken that long. We know the data is mm -hmm. there. Yeah. That because of institutional racism, because of redlining, because of all these things that we know that exist in history, we're seeing communities disproportionately impacted. There should never be a Flint, Michigan. Right. In 2021, I started this Journey to Justice <laughs> tour because people actually thought Flint was a one-off or don't believe lots of communities are right. on the cusp of that. Newark had that issue, I That's remember. That's crazy. Lots of communities. I um, actually visited an uh, elementary school in Jackson, Mississippi. School is shut down, but there are porta potties lined up all along the school. I thought that was for construction. Those were for the children because the water pressure in that school was so low. Now, this is during COVID. That's crazy. So can you imagine sending your children to school? They can't wash their hands. Oh, my God. They can't That's use awful. the toilet That's inside. That's so dangerous. This is 2021 in Mississippi. This is kids. So this is happening all across the country. Yeah. I've spent time in Louisiana, Cancer Alley, Texas. I was just in Alaska and, vis and visiting with our indigenous brothers and sisters, Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. This is happening in 2023. So... Yeah, I'm passionate about making sure that people understand President Biden has created, along with Congress, billions of dollars to begin solving some of these solutions. We can't wait for states and local governments to do it. We have to arm our local community leaders with some resources. Right now, we are talking to the Environmental Protection Agency Administrator, Michael Regan. All right, well, let's talk about it. The $3 billion from the Inflation Reduction Act, and that is going to be advancing environmental justice. One more time, where can people go to get more information um, so they can also join in this fight against climate change? People should go to epa.gov. This is a priority, so you can access it very quickly from our homepage. And there's tons of information about this $3 billion. I will say this. My agency typically is a $13 billion agency per year. Under the Biden-Harris administration, we've got $100 billion mm. solely so focused on job. this transition. Yeah. And by law, 40% of that 100 must go to disadvantaged communities. So that's amazing. Yeah. So we're we're really rolling out the resources and putting our money where our mouth is. Because when we think about the hottest months on record in J June and July, mm -hmm. again, who are the people affected? You know, we tell people don't go outside if you can get air conditioning, stay inside. Yep. Some people don't have air conditioning, right. and it's also expensive to that's have right. your air yeah. conditioner on all day. And we take it for granted. Yeah, yeah it's a do. real thing. Yeah. All right. Well, we appreciate you so much for taking time to come through. I know you said you were going to do it. You are a man of your word. <laughs> All right. I saw you at Essence Fest and we discussed this and then your team definitely reached out. So I appreciate you because this is very important and we want to make sure that people know exactly what's going on. Again, you're prioritizing youth engagement. That is part of the plan. Yes. Because like you said, the youth is oh, they're always the ones that lead us. Yep. I'm, I'm excited to say in about a month or so, we're going to launch the first ever federal advisory council that is 
occupied solely by youth, 16 to 29. Oh, nice. That's amazing. Yeah. Yep. And so we're treating them just like we treat all the experts who will sit with me in public meetings. They will offer me advice. Mm-hmm. I will have to they'll take keep, that advice. They keep advice. you in touch. They're going to be out of touch hold with my feet to the fire. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Explain it what's going on. <laughs> we'll have a viral dance. So that's, that's, that's coming soon. All right. Well, thank you yeah. so thank much. You. We appreciate you for coming through. EPA.gov. Yes. Okay. EPA.gov. Check that out. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. EPA Administrator Michael S. Regan. And when we come back, you guys have the last word. It's Way Up with Angela Yee. 800-292-5150. Pick up the phone. Tap in. Tap in to get your voice heard. What the word is. Here's the last word on Way Up with Angela Yee. What's up? It's Way Up with Angela Yee. I'm Angela Yee and Maino is here. I'm here, baby. New Maino. Yeah. What else you got to do for the rest of the day? Oh, man. You know, we doing rehearsal. More rehearsals. More rehearsals. Are you enjoying rehearsals? I like it. For your show? I like. You know what I like about it? What? It's seeing something come together. That's amazing. I'm excited to this see was, this show. This was, this was the idea that I had, and now it's coming all together. I love it. Yes. And, man, you're a very entertaining person. Yeah, processes. And, by the way, you look like you've been losing weight. Really? Yeah, since you don't come in here. I feel like I've been gaining. I've been gaining. Nah, you look good, man. I feel like I'm I'm obese. Well, today I'm about to go take my real estate exam. Lord, I hope I I pass. If not, I'll take it again. Worst case scenario. You got to put in the universe that you're going to pass. I'm going to pass. Speak it. But I'm going to be embarrassed if I have to come in here and tell you. No, you won't. All right. And also, thank you to Michael S. Regan, the administrator for the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency, for coming and joining us today. They had to do a whole sweep of the building. Mm. He had the Secret Service here Mm -hmm. with him but we wanted to make sure we got that information and again you guys we will see you tomorrow you always have the last word 800-292-5150 I'm interested in buying pictures from you Angela Yee and I've been emailing you for a few years now and I really 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 am interested in buying pictures from you how much would you charge I'm gonna leave a secret that I slept with my ex-girlfriend's mom's best friend and this was over 10 years ago and she still doesn't know Yes, I want to shine a light on my boyfriend, Terrence Boo, for being a great father, a good provider, just an overall great person. He always helps people, so I think he should have the light shining on him right now. Thank you. You tapped in and way up with Angela Yee.